All right, good people, let's get this party started. Now, those of you who don't know me, I'm Nicole Johnson and I own Digital Made Simple. Okay, I'm here to tell you the five mistakes you are making with Dubsado. So if you don't know what Dubsado is, I've got a link in my description so that you can see exactly what Dubsado is. But it is a customer relationship management software, a CRM, and it allows you to communicate and share information back with your customers. It helps you with invoicing and contracts and managing your project files. And so it's a great tool to use, but a lot of people have a little bit of a learning curve around it that they can't seem to get over. And so I'm here to tell you that there may be five things, five simple things that you can correct that can make your use of Dubsado a much smoother and more pleasant experience, not only for you, but also for your customers. If there's more things that I haven't thought about, please let me know in the comments. And also, if you like this information and you like what I'm sharing, click subscribe and click that notification bell so that you can know whenever there's a new video coming out. Okay, so let's get into it. What's the number one mistake that some people are making with Dubsado? People are not using templates as templates. So what do I mean by that? So I'm gonna show you. One of the things that I've noticed more commonly than not is that people will have duplicates of their template forms or questionnaires in, the, in their Dubsado portal, and that's completely not necessary. What that comes from is thinking that if I have to customize a form for each of my clients, then I must need to make a duplicate form in the templates folder, and that is not the case. So when you look at my Dubsado, and what you may notice that I have two design contracts, right? This is not necessary. The only reason you would need more than one similar form is if there is something slightly different about it that you're gonna reuse over and over again, right? And that slight difference cannot be the fact that it's for a different customer or that they need some sort of custom process or custom services from you. So if you have like, design contract for one client and they're essentially the same but then you want to have another design contract for another client you don't need to duplicate this you can delete one of these <gasps> ah, it's so scary they make it seem like it's like you're gonna just mess up your whole system if you remove this form but no go ahead and delete it just delete it you only need one because when you have to customize a form you can do that in their project. So for example, if I go to projects, and let's say I'm using this sandbox project, which is what I use for a lot of my kind of teaching and tutorials, um, and I go to forms, right? I can add a form here, and let's say it's a design contract. Maybe, maybe let's use a addendum, right? Once you add it, because I don't want to use a contract because it might, end up replacing the contract that's already there because you can only really have one contract per per project right so let's say we have a, a contract addendum when i add it once i add it it's not sent to the customer yet i have the opportunity to click here and click edit and change whatever information that i need to change to customize it for that client then i can save it save and close and then once I go to forms, it still needs sending. I don't need a whole new contract in my templates folder in order to do that. So don't clutter your forms with a bunch of duplicates because you think you have to customize it for each and every client that you're working with. Okay, stop it. Stop it right now. You can just use a template as just what it's called, a template. And then you can customize it within the project. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, let me check my notes now, let me check my notes. Not adding customizable templates to workflows. Okay, so this is kind of a piggyback to the same kind of uh, flawed logic that people are using with uh, duplicating templates. They actually think that they can't add custom templates to workflows because 
if the template runs through and sends a form and you haven't had a chance to uh, customize it for that client, you know, put their name in it or put, put things like that in there, then it's gonna go to the client and it's gonna be wrong. And nobody wants that. It is a valid concern. However, a couple of things with this. First of all, make sure that you're making liberal use of smart fields, right? So for example, let's say I have this proposal. Let's open it up. So if you're using smart fields, then a lot of the work and heavy lifting for customizing it for your clients is done for you because you can open up a particular module or text box and make sure you're adding the smart fields for the client's name or their contact information or whatever it is, or even, you know, custom fields that you created. You can use that in your forms to make sure that it's customized for that client. Okay. But some of you, you have custom packages, so you customize it for every single client. Well, that's not a problem either. So you can add that to your workflow. You can add this form to your workflow, just like I have here. And basically what happens is make sure that if you do have to go in and customize it, you put an approve button there. That approve button allows you to go in and customize it specifically for that client. If you're customizing the service package that you're trying to offer to that client or customizing any information. For example, when I do logo designs, I still have my logo designs in there. Now, obviously every single client is gonna have a different logo, right? But I still have the round one and round two logo designs as part of my workflow. But I make sure that there's an approved step in there so that I have to go in and replace the information for that, that client's logo. I have to replace that manually for each client. And so the way that you do that is let's hit the gear icon to edit this workflow. And then here where you have forms or questionnaires or things like that, that you want to be approved, you make sure you click this box here, require approval before completing this action. Okay. That's it. That's all you have to do. And then you don't have to worry about any sort of form or questionnaire going out prematurely to your clients without you having customized it properly. The whole point of Dubsado is for the automations and for the information that you're communicating to your clients to be, you know, seamless and that you don't have to touch every single thing in order for you to communicate with your clients. Once you're ready to actually add it to a workflow, let's go ahead and add this to a workflow, right? Now I've applied it. Now I'll get all the other stuff that's going to come before it. But once I get to this particular step in the workflow, it will stop. All of the forms are now added to the the project, but the customer can't see them yet. They're not added to the portal. They're just added to the project. Now I can go in, make some changes to any of the logo designs that I want to make. Yep. Add the logo concepts in, add all the stuff in and I can save it, save and close. And once that looks the way that I want it to look, I can go back to workflows and click approve. So don't be afraid to add your custom forms and your templates to workflows because you have a couple of areas where you can actually stop the process and customize it for your clients without it being sent prematurely. So that's number two. So now let's see what's number three. Okay. Here's the thing. Now that we're talking about workflows, the third mistake that I see people make when they're trying to create workflows, they come straight to workflows and say, okay, now what do I do? Okay. Stop. Don't do that. You really have to map out your workflow before you start creating it in Dubsado. It can be as simple as taking out a pen and a piece of paper and saying, okay, this is step one. I want to send them this email. Step two, I want, once they respond to the email, I want to send them this form. Step three, and so on, and so on, and so forth. So that's all you need to do. So here's what I've done. And you can use anything as simple as a piece of paper and pen, or you can use something more sophisticated. Like if you have Google Docs, or if you have a Google account, you can use um, their kind of 
flow charting software um, within Google Docs, you can create a flow chart for yourself. Um, one of the things that I use is called Real Time Board. I will show you one of the processes that I've created for one of my clients. Here's the lead capture phase. Um, here's all the steps to it. And then I create whatever workflows or canned emails or anything like that, that I need to do to finish this lead capture phase. Then I go to the proposal phase and I start thinking about, okay, what are all the steps in the proposal phase? You create these steps and map it out. And then when you go to Dubsado, you basically have everything you need to map out what you want. In Dubsado, the way that the templates are, are laid out is kind of in order. So the first thing I would do is create the forms. Um, if I don't use the scheduler uh, personally, but I do set up the scheduler for other people um, who are my clients, but I would set up the scheduler, I would set up the forms. For every form, there should be a canned email, so that's why that's next. For every canned email and every form, you probably got some sort of service or product package that you're providing, set those up. Then once you all those things are set up, then you can go into your workflow and start setting it up, okay? So, because if you don't do that and you go in and try to create workflows um, without having a real good roadmap, you're gonna get really overwhelmed really quick. Then you're gonna be like, well, I don't wanna use workflows. I thought this was supposed to be easy. It's not easy. I can't automate anything. Why did I pay for this software? Now, certainly if you don't feel like doing any of it and you know that someone like me can do it quicker, feel free to call me. You know, I've got a whole page. You can purchase um, Dubsado services from me. Link will be in the description. But um, at the end of the day, if you are really trying to manage your workflows and manage your automation, map it out first. So now for the fourth mistake that I see people making when using Dubsado is not personalizing their communications. Now, what do I mean by personalizing your communications? A lot of times people are hesitant about using a CRM software like Dubsado or 17 has or whatever one you happen to be using um, because they feel like it's too impersonal. It keeps them at a distance from their clients and they want to give their clients a personal touch. So you don't have to forfeit that because you can make your communications with your clients custom, personal, and engaging so that they know that they're getting kind of like white glove service, which is what you want to provide your customers, right? So one of the things that you can do is, again, make liberal use of smart fields, making sure that your email communications, your forms say, hello, such and such. Make sure that it actually personally um, reflects your communication to them so that they know or feel even if they know intellectually that you're not typing every single email out, they should feel like, hey, she typed this out just for me. That's the minimum that you can do to make sure that you're personalizing your communications with your clients. But you can take it a step further. If you use Google Chrome, you can actually add personalized videos to your Dubsado um, forms. And I'll give you an example of this, um, how I've used this for our clients. So for example, I've done some logo design work for a client. And one of the things that I did was go over his whole brand board, right? So if you open up his brand board, you'll see that there's an actual video from me talking to him about how to use his brand board, how to you know, review it, what to see. I'll play a, just a little snippet um, in your client portal for your branding and identity design. So there you go. Um, the software that tool that I use is called Loom um, and you can get it from the Google extensions and you can create these nifty little videos that record your browser window as well as record your face and then they can see you talking to them about their specific issue, right? And then it'll spit out an embed code that you can add to your forms. So that's like level 10 personalization. So we went from level one personalization of using 
smart fields and things like that all the way up to level 10 is like actually speaking to them right so that's one thing that you can really do and and there's a whole variety of things you can do in between there but definitely take every opportunity to personalize the communications that you have with your clients the fifth mistake that i see people making when it comes to the upsado is not using the portal the portal the portal is where it's at that's where your money is being made people love again that white glove service of you being able to say oh i can go to this custom boutique little spot on the web and get all of my files get all of my information the thing about the portal is it can be intimidating um fortunately for you i have made a whole video on how to pimp out your portal i'll put a link to that video in the description as well now also i made a video about how to embed um, the video uh recordings from loom in your forms that link is also going to be in the description but definitely use your portal because it really creates a custom lovely little boutique space for your clients to come and retrieve the information that they want to retrieve now the thing about the portal is you can make it nice you can make it custom and in fact i think that you can make every single client's portal custom to them right you can put you know a little something that says you know this is you know bumquisha's boutique you know and put their information on their portal so you can do that and really make it personalized so that kind of harkens back to the last uh tip that i gave and you can continue to use the assets that you've created from the portal in all the other forms that you use so using the portal is a very great way to have a seamless branded experience for your clients so that they will feel really special working with you okay so let's recap okay five mistakes that i see people using with Dubsado the most one is not using templates as templates they're using templates as each and every form and they have these duplicate templates all over the place no use templates as templates two not adding customizable templates to your workflows you most certainly can use templates in your workflows and not worry about them going out to your clients prematurely because you put an approve button on there and make sure that you have the temp the the form customized appropriately before you send it out three not mapping your workflow make sure that if you are creating workflows plan it out ahead of time or else you're going to give yourself a headache and an aneurysm and a conniption and you're going to want to throw your computer out the window don't do that to yourself save some energy save some headaches map it out first then pretty much just go straight down the line creating the forms and emails that you need to support that workflow four not personalizing your communications with your clients if you want your clients to feel like they're having white glove service, personalize your communications, use smart fields, embed video, do whatever it takes to make your client feel really well taken care of. And five, finally, not using the portal properly. Make sure you're using your portal. Make sure that you are allowing your customers to have that kind of VIP feel by going by having a portal available for them to access their forms access the information you're sharing with them and be able to reference it again and again so i don't know if i hit everything but if i missed anything again please tell me in the comments below don't forget to click subscribe click the notification bell so that you can see any new videos that i come out with I really appreciate your time and I hope that you're well on your way to becoming a Dubsado aficionado. Bye.